great team isn't born. It's built. One intangible at a time. Heart, chemistry, character. Right back there! Right back there! Oh, God. Bound together by the belief that comes from overcoming adversity. Cinderella wins a national championship! And the Bruins have done it! With a steady hand shaping the framework and applying the finishing touches, all it takes is time, effort, and a long road taken as a team. A team with one shared dream, one goal in mind, to win it all in Omaha. The University of Texas, two wins away from a 35th trip to Omaha in the College World Series. Hard to believe they're here after the last two seasons that saw no NCAA tournament. But Texas says we are back. On the other side, how about the University of Houston, a team that went to Baton Rouge, hammered LSU 12-2 on Monday to reach this Super Regional. They, too, now two wins away from a College World Series, though it would be their first since 1967. Welcome to the NCAA Baseball Super Regionals presented by Capital One as we come to you from UFCU Dishfalk Field at the University of Texas in Austin. Take a look at these Super Regional brackets as we have them. This, of course, the second game to begin in Super Regional play this weekend. The winner out of this Austin Super Regional will move on to face the winner out of Stillwater with game one between the Anteaters and Oklahoma State Cowboys coming up tonight on ESPNU. And with that, we welcome you inside the dish. Dari Noka here alongside former Florida State quarterback, yes, but also baseball player Danny Cannell. You look at these programs historically, they're not close. They're not in the same conversation, and Houston knows that as much as anybody does. But you look at these two teams this year, they're actually really similar. You could swap uniforms, and you probably wouldn't be able to tell them apart. It's all about pitching and defense. Both teams have top 10 pitching staffs, and they try to create offense, some version of small ball. Get a guy on base, bunt him over, maybe a hit and run. Try to get a couple runs behind those pitchers who are so solid. It's going to come down to who executes their version of offense better and who defends better and which pitchers pound the strike zone more effectively. This we know, every run could be crucial in this super regional on the other side of this break we will introduce you to the two pitchers jake lemoyne and nathan thornhill and welcome in the third member of our team kaylee hartung from the field scoring thank you you the man dude beautiful 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 good looking out Welcome back to Austin, Texas. Game one of this Super Regional about to get underway between Texas and Houston. And it's an interesting situation with two two seeds from last weekend's regionals meeting up. There was actually a coin flip on Thursday to determine the home field. It wasn't automatically Texas. The coin flip was won by Houston, and they are the home team here, ironically enough, in game one in Austin. As we send it down to the third member of our crew, Kaylee Hartung. Dari, coaches and players here agree, two incredibly similar teams. So after Houston did what they did in Baton Rouge a weekend ago, their coach Todd Whitting said there was no question in his mind that they would host a Super Regional. Augie Garrido went so far as to say Houston's the favorite given their performance a weekend ago. But all things being equal, the University of Texas guaranteed more money in their bid to host this. And so it's one of the big reasons why we're here in Austin. Texas has delivered on that promise, selling out Dishfalk Field. We're looking at a crowd of 7,600. Houston given just 600 of those seats as mandated by the NCAA. I'll guess some Houston fans found a way to get in Dish Falk Field today. All right, Kaylee, thank you very much. So Texas, the road team here uh, at the Dish in Austin. Again, Houston looking for their first College World Series appearance since 1967. Danny Cannell, Texas did go in 2011. But again, two years with no NCAA appearance. Jake, watch, go ahead. Watch that home field advantage. That chip on the shoulder of Houston is going to come into play. And the first pitch of the Super Regional in Austin is fouled away. So 0-1 to the Texas leadoff man, Brooks Marlowe, second baseman, 5'8", junior out of Giddings, Texas.
Take a look at the starting lineup for the Texas Longhorns. Marlowe followed by the left fielder, Ben Johnson, and then the center fielder, Mark Payton Danny, who kind of just makes everything go for this offense. Talk about a guy who can do this some damage from that third spot in the lineup, gets on base so frequently Sorry. for Texas. So the one two now to Marlowe, and that is just outside, two and two. Jake LeMoyne did start the previous matchup with Texas back on March 1st, went seven innings, gave up three runs, just one of them earned, took the loss, but his defense committed four errors behind him, so he tough left loss, and that is a leadoff base hit for the Texas second baseman, Brooks Marlowe. Right off the open, we talked about small ball, both teams like to get guys on, move them over. But in order to, have to execute that effectively, you've got to get the leadoff guy on. That's why Brooks Marlowe with the leadoff hit to start this game will test Houston early. So that'll bring up now the left fielder, Ben Johnson, from right here in Austin, Westwood High School. Johnson leads the Longhorns with six home runs. This is a team that's only hit 20. And in this ballpark, which obviously plays long, we've talked about this and we'll continue to. It is, uh, this is a team out of their 20 home runs that's hit just four here. This place is a graveyard. <laughs> Paul's not going anywhere near those fences. 405 in the alleys, 375 in the gap, and 340 down the line. It's a monster shot to carry one out of here. So the 1-0 now to Johnson. That's a ground ball short. Could be two. Ratcliffe to second for one over to first. And Johnson beats that throw. And here comes the man that kind of makes it go for Texas. One of the more incredible statistics or achievements this college baseball season is what Mark Payton is still working on going back to last season. 99 consecutive games reaching base. That is the longest streak in the country and it set a Big 12 record. So Johnson on first for Payton. Now, they may be a little bit hesitant to run on the Houston catcher, Caleb Barker, who has thrown out eight of the last 11 men who have tried to steal on him. 44% clip on the season for Barker. And really, if you went back and scouted the tape and saw Caleb Barker, what he did in that regional tournament last weekend in Baton Rouge, he was almost, you just couldn't run on him. I mean, he was throwing out guys left and right. So the 1-0 coming to Mark Payton from LeMoyne. And he takes a strike, 1-1. One one. Both these teams, patience at the plate. Disciplined hitters, they're going to force you to throw strikes. They're not going to swing at anything outside of the strike zone. Very disciplined at the plate. They call Payton a professional hitter. Perhaps at some point he will be. 318 average on the season as they check over on Johnson. Johnson now, while they may not want to test Barker out of the chute, Johnson may be a guy to do it. He's 20 for 20 on the bases this season trying to steal. It's a fun matchup right now, Barker versus Johnson, if he does go. Might have been a little lean as <laughs> LeMoyne checked over there. Did you catch that too? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> Leaning on that right side, Jake LeMoyne paying a lot of attention to Johnson. With a name like Ben Johnson, he's got to be fast. <laughs> That's right. Not going. That's a strike on the outside corner. One and two now to Mark Payton. The catcher, Tress Barrera, cleanup hitter, stands on deck. You can tell even, you know, Caleb Barker gets a lot of credit, but these pitchers for Houston, you can see Jake LeMoyne going out of the stretch, a quick movement. He doesn't have a high leg kick out of the stretch to try to make it easier for his catcher. It makes it tougher. Yeah, again, over on Johnson, and dives back. 
He should be exhausted enough not to steal. <laughs> yeah, with right. Both these teams know the premium that runs are going to come by in this series. If you can get one early, that could be a huge advantage. You know, you peek over at the uh, first Super Regional game to begin. It's an 11-6 game between Stanford and Vanderbilt. We don't expect that here <laughs> in any of the possibly three games. I don't think they did either. You never know if it's going <laughs> to happen. Vanderbilt leading that game in the bottom of the seventh. As you see, Augie Garrido, 1,915 wins, most of any coach in the history of NCAA baseball. And Peyton fouls that off. We stay two and two. What a remarkable run. 99 consecutive games reaching base for Mark Payton. Johnson's lead, healthy again, but he's not going, and that's running the count full now, three and two. As now Barker comes out, just has a couple of pieces of advice for Lamoine. It's distracting. If you're Jake Lamoine on the on the mound, you're sitting over there, you're concerned. There's a lot going on. You got Johnson over there, 20 for 20. You know what kind of speed he's got, and yet you've still got to focus on a guy like Mark Payton, who's probably the most dangerous hitter in this Longhorn lineup. Foul back, three and two again. Pitch number eight of this at bat is coming to Mark Payton. You can see how he would be frustrating to face and takes a lot of walks, 53 of them. That's tied for third nationally. As the fifth throw over to check on Johnson. They call it the dish. UFCU Dish Falk Field. 7,300, a little under that is the normal capacity. Kaylee was talking about it's now 7,600 with some temporary bleachers. Peyton sends that deep to right field and is gone. Just the second home run of the season for Mark Payton. We said there's going to be no <laughs> runs in this game. Did I mention we were going to see small ball? I don't think anybody thought of that one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mark Payton in a hitter's count. Leaves one a little lift. And, you know, there is a wind blowing out, but it's not favoring the right field. No. It's, more, it's more blowing out towards left. Payton just got every bit of that one. And that's a shock. I mean, I think both these coaches would be shocked, too. They were talking about how, hey, it's going to be a pitching and defense series. Remarkable. The base hit, then a fielder's choice, followed by a two-run home run, number two for the man who wears number two for the burnt orange. And here's your cleanup hitter, Tress Barrera, the catcher, six-foot freshman. And they say outside of Mark Payton, this is the most talented hitter on this baseball team. Yeah, he roped that, no question. When that left the bat, that was that was gone. Bullpen bound. And now you talk about who's hosting. I mean, that yeah. this crowd is now at completely into it here. Four hitters in. The one and two coming to Barrera, fouled back. But after Houston did what they did in Baton Rouge. This is not a team that's afraid of an atmosphere no. and environment. You're talking well over 10,000, 11,000 at Alex Box every game there at LSU. And they went 2-1 and one against the Tigers in that ballpark. Barrera, center field. Fulman makes the catch. Well, he's behind 2-0 right now, but what are you looking for? 
you know, from Jake Lemoyne. Jake Lemoyne's a flamethrower. He's a guy that can bring it up there close to 94 miles an hour. Haven't seen it yet, but he definitely has. He's got a nasty slider, and then once guys, you know, batters start to figure him out late in the game, that's when he works in that changeup to keep him off balance. But that's something I'm trying to keep an eye on is his velocity in this game, and he hasn't been quite up there in that 93, 94 mile an hour zone yet. You don't know if the heat haven't affected him. You know, this part of the year, you get a little bit worn down. You've had a long regional series. Also, he's got to keep that ball down in the strike zone. So the 0-1 now coming to Madison Carter. The last, last couple of batters, he's had to go to that slider to get up in these counts. Landon Appling out in center field for Houston. Not Fulmer, as I said before. It's one and two now. Let's be sent it back down to Kaylee. Coach Whitting explained to me, Dari, that Jake Lemoyne, a young guy, just a sophomore with some raw talent. Frank Anderson has helped him with a secondary pitch, but this guy's a competitor. Whitting, excited to see what he brings on the mound for him today. All right, ground ball, third base. That is just foul. Greg Charles, the third base umpire, held his hands up immediately. That was really uh, right there on top of the bag or just to the foul side, according to Greg. That is a close call. <laughs> Let's see if he got it right here. Says, Where does it go over the bag? I, it's really tight. But if you're Texas, you might have caught a break because <laughs> he was, he might have been there. He was called out. He so got it. Texas, yeah. you're glad it was called foul. And one should be arguing it's Houston. <laughs> could have been out of this inning. I would agree with that. <laughs> All right, so the one two coming again to Madison Carter, who's been on a tear. Carter, ground ball, second base, Vidalis. Well, it wasn't easy. They got out of the first, but not before number two drove in two with home run number two. As we go to the bottom of the first, Mark Payton has made it to Zip Texas. Welcome back to Austin, Texas, as the quote-unquote road team has jumped out to a 2-0 lead thanks to a Mark Payton two-run homer. As we go into the bottom of the first, Houston again won the coin flip yesterday in a battle of two seeds. They get to be the home team here in game one, and, well, it won't be easy for them because on the mound is Nathan Thornhill, who absolutely has it working right now, Danny Cannell. Uh, he's, he's their go-to guy. He has been on fire as of late especially really starting to feel it as this postseason wears on and that's when you'd want to peak last four starts for Thornhill he's allowed one earned run in 22 and two-thirds innings of work that's a 0.40 earned run average and the lineup that he will be facing looks like this a lot of pressure on that first guy there Kyle Cervantes the right fielder they say they go as he goes but a little bit of pop there in the lineup as well. You look at a six home run man in Casey Grace in the first baseman. Yeah, Casey Grace in the senior. He's really an inspirational guy for this team. Missed a lot of time early in his career due to injuries, but they really seem to rally around him as well. And here is Kyle Cervantes. Leads the team, 53 runs on the season, 78 hits. Freshman All-American last season. In fact, last weekend in Baton Rouge, he was named the regional most valuable player. And that's a fly ball to left field. Ben Johnson doesn't have to go far right away. Tell us about what we'll be watching for Nathan Thornhill. Not too much different than Jake Lemoyne. He's another guy who can bring it up there around 92 miles per hour at his peak. He's got a cutter that he's developed lately, a changeup. And then really what for the thing that stands out to me is he's one of the leaders on the team. He's a guy who's had some experience playing in Omaha, one of the one of the couple, and he really sets the tone for this Longhorn squad. Michael Pyatt, the left fielder, 5'9 junior from Lake Jackson, Texas. Career 300 hitter right around there right now, 297. Contact hitter. Get on base guy doesn't strike out much. That's a ground ball. A one hopper there to Brooks Morrow. Two down. A little bit of controversy surrounding this super regional in the fact that Texas is the host school. Yes, they're the road team here in game one. Houston comes in with an RPI of two. Texas is six. And Houston really felt that they had an opportunity 
to be a host school. On Tuesday morning, it was announced that the University of Texas would host this Super Regional. And you ask, well, why and how does that happen? The, the answer, at least in large part, is money. Texas was able to guarantee $90,000 more in revenue than Houston for a two-game Super Regional, and then another $50,000 more if there's a third game. Their stadium is more than twice as big as Houston's. And the NCAA admitted as much. J.D. Hamilton, NCAA media coordinator, said, I think both of the institutions, the on-field resumes are pretty similar. You just have to find some place there's a difference between the two institutions. There's a difference in the bids. One of our criteria is revenue potential. And the revenue potential of Texas is better. And they proved that with the bid they gave over what Houston had. Fair or not, we're here in Austin and not in Houston. And now Todd Whitting and the Cougars continue their road swing. What do you make of that, Dan? Well, I was going to correct you because you said in large part, and I was going to say for the only part, it's all about the money. <laughs> You may be right. <laughs> you may be right. And, and like it or not, that's just the way it is. And, you know, Todd Whitting, his, his team, they felt like they should have hosted a regional, let alone, you know, a super regional, when they advanced through Baton Rouge. And they've kind of felt like, hey, we're going we're to kind of end this together. It's us against the world. We're on the road again. We're used to hotels. Let's go out there and do it. Casey Grayson, the first baseman, ground ball, second. Marlowe, another chance, another play. <laughs> And it's three up, three down in the bottom of the first. Just nine pitches thrown by Thornhill. We move to the second, two set, four. After rallying for a dramatic 5-4 win in 11 innings Sunday, Houston forced LSU to an all-deciding game seven. And the Cougars scored seven runs in the third. They gave up the first two of the game. Jared Robinson came to the mound in the third for Houston. And they, he went the rest of the way, striking at eight, allowing three hits, no runs, and they bashed LSU 12-2, capturing the Baton Rouge Regional. And Todd Whitting's team off to the Super Regional here in Austin. Beat Bryant, and they lost to LSU, beat Southeastern Louisiana, and then beat LSU, and then beat LSU again. And that performance, Danny Cannell, on Monday, I, I was stunned with what they were able to do. And LSU that, couldn't pitch in that game. They really struggled. That oh. turned a lot of heads, that one. And that, that's the difference in postseason is depth in your rotation in your bullpen. And that's what Houston showed. C.J. Hinojosa, the shortstop, 5'11", sophomore. Starts out the Texas second. And LeMoyne threw that one back. So quickly 0-2 to Hinojosa. What's the key for Jake Lemoyne for getting the Mark Payton home run and starting from a scratch here? I think he's got to settle down, settle into this game. You know, a lot of times, hey, it's a super Houston. We talked about Texas being here a lot. Houston hasn't been here as much. And for Lemoyne, just kind of find that release point, especially on that slider. We've seen him looks more comfortable with that slider now than the fastball. He's got to get that fastball working. Again, going to the off speed. Yeah, got but, in the host a little got, ahead of that. But establishing that fastball, you know, the 93, 94 miles an hour is where you can start to locate it on the inner and outer half of the plate and start keeping these Texas hitters off balance. In a Hosa, ground ball, Ratcliffe over to make the play and the out. How about Houston defensively? Last seven games through this postseason, just one error committed. They've been very dependable by whoever is on the mound. That's one thing. When you have a top 10 pitching staff, it's not just because the guys are up there throwing unhittable stuff. It's because you've got fielders behind you that can defend and execute. Well, that looked good, didn't it? It did look good. <laughs> Colin Shaw, the right fielder. I must Austin say, Wesley High School. You and I, whether we were going to Austin or Houston, we were excited to be coming to this state because we yep. knew we'd eat well, be treated well, get hospitality <laughs> in the state. So far, so good here in Texas's capital city as that ball is fouled out of play by Shaw. Houston uh, defensively in the outfield. Michael Pieta Jr. out there in left, Landon Applin, a sen uh, senior center fielder. And then Kyle Cervantes, the leadoff man 
a sophomore out in right. Saw the Hyatt beard. <laughs> a lot of beards this time of year. Yep. yep. I tell you, UNLV though might get the uh, award for best facial hair. Mm -hmm. They had the uh, the Raleigh fingers, mustaches going the entire team. They were they were pretty impressive, I must say. But hey, you know the Red Sox started with those beards and they yep. just followed along. Whatever works. No doubt. Baseball. Those were the idiots, weren't they? Yeah, they were the idiots. <laughs> well, Red Sox in 2004, though, the idiots. Yeah. yeah oh, no, no question. Hey, baseball is a superstitious bunch, you know. If you have a three for four day at the plate, I wouldn't touch it either. <laughs> And the clean shaven Colin Shaw sitting at one and two. One out here in the top of the second. A Mark Payton two run homer in the first. Has put two on the board for Texas as Shaw strikes out swing. Jake Lemoyne starting to get that sinking fastball going. Took something off. Watch the movement on this pitch. Moving away from the left-handed batter, low, down and away. That's really tough for a left-handed batter to see and let alone get some contact on. Danny, they're making Lemoyne throw. You see the 35 pitches here in the second. Six of the seven Texas hitters have gone at least five pitches deep as Casey Clemens steps in. Clemens, yes, he is related to Roger. The young son, freshman first baseman, struggles a little bit at the plate, just 216 this season, but a vacuum at first base in that absolutely keeps him on the field. Big boy. Freshman from Houston. We talk about his pitch recognition. Well, he hasn't found a lot of hits this season. Very good eye, and they think that may come from hanging out a little bit with his, uh, <laughs> with pops. I'm sure it did help. You see his number. Honored here at the University of Texas. Clemens, ground ball, nicely played by Grayson over at first, the flip to Lemoyne. And after finding trouble in the first, there's no such trouble for Houston in the second. One and a half through, two zip, Texas. Well, just like Houston did in Baton Rouge, Texas had to go through a winner take all game in the Rice Regional. The Longhorns, Chad Hollingsworth. First start of the season, he went the distance, a two-hitter. Texas gets the go-ahead run in the fourth, and C.J. Hinojosa adds two insurance runs in the seventh with an RBI double. Texas knocks off Texas A&M, eliminating the Aggies and sending Texas to a ninth Super Regional. Nine Supers in the 16 seasons that college baseball's had its current format. They beat A&M the first time around, then Rice. They were sitting pretty till A&M got them on Sunday, so they needed one more on Monday. And the Longhorns, and Aggie Garino got that one. His career win, number 1915. Thornhill, a nine pitch first, comes out for the second for Texas, and he will face four, five, and six in the Cougar lineup. Frankie Ratliff, the shortstop, starts it off. Larry Noka, Danny Cannell, Kaylee Hartung here in Austin, Texas. You know, the X Games are going on here as well. And uh, that's a big deal, but you look around this ballpark today and, and, and they realize this is a pretty big deal as well. 7,600 sold tickets for all three games, if there are three. How about this? Did you catch any of that last night? The X oh, Games, the, the half pipe with the capital behind. How cool was that? It's a beautiful city. Look at, even the camera's got a hook em horns <laughs> thing. Careful, don't want to show any partiality. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's a base hit for Frankie Ratcliffe. And Ratcliffe is aboard to start off the Cougar second. And up comes the DH, Justin Montemayor, 6'3 sophomore from Austin of Anderson High School, a walk on last season. Got a chance to play when Casey Grayson tore his ACL. Became a freshman All-American in the process. So now he's got the leadoff man on first. Interesting to see what Houston does here with the leadoff batter on with the trailing by two if they try to chip away at it, move him over. 
whether a bunt or put something on, a hit and run. Ratcliffe over at first has attempted 21 steals. He has succeeded 17 times. Houston is very, very aggressive on the bases. East of Texas defensively, third baseman up. He's playing, watching out for that sack month. There's a called strike from Thornhill, one and one. You know, we talk coming in, and we'll talk throughout this series, how runs are certainly at a premium, unless the absolutely unexpected happens. You've got to like a 2-0 lead if you're Texas. Oh, you're quick. loving in it. In this game. Check over there again, and Radcliffe dives back. Radcliffe there at first. The only Houston player with NCAA experience. He played his freshman year at Miami. He's out of Key West, Florida. That's a fly ball left field. Johnson makes the catch. And back to first goes Ratcliffe. How about Texas defensively? There is the sophomore Ben Johnson in left. Mark Payton, he of the two-run first inning home run out there in center field, and Colin Shaw, the junior, out in right for the Longhorns. Third baseman Connor Hollis at the plate now for Houston. One on, one out here in the bottom of the second. So Houston started the series with two wins. They had a coin flip Thursday to determine game one home team. They won. They called it. It was Taylor. Augie Garrido called the coin flip for game three, if there is one. Called heads. It was tails. Tex uh, Houston is 2-0 to this point. <laughs> but they're still playing here in Austin. That's exactly <laughs> that might right. Be the biggest win of all for Augie Garrido. He said, I don't even know about how it happens. <laughs> you know, all I know is we're home. My hunch is he has a hunch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know that he can right. plead the fifth entirely on that. 46 seasons. How about four decades with a national championship? 79 at Cal State Fullerton was the first. Another one in the 80s. Another one in the 90s. A couple of this uh, in the 2000s with Texas. Five national championships in all for Augie Garrido. And there Hollis tried to lay down a bunt. In that typical sack situation. That's why I was a little bit surprised they didn't try it with Montemayor the last at bat. That one was more of a try to drag one, see if you can sneak one on Texas, catch him asleep defensively. We look at Texas's championships. Two of those with Augie Garrido. He's definitely a legend of the game for sure. Ground ball. Hinojosa steps on second. Fires the first. And Texas gets out of the second. The 6 3 double play. Hinojosa to Casey Clemens. So the leadoff single did not hurt the horns. They go to the third, leading to nothing. We are uh, just above home plate here. You can bring that right up this way. Yeah. <laughs> we're sitting there complaining in here because we're toasty. <laughs> Poor Kaylee's out on the field in the 90 degrees. Folks out in the sunshine watching 90, 91 degrees in that ballpark here. And Augie Garrido. He of the five national championships, seven trips to Omaha here with Texas. You see his accomplishments. How about yesterday telling the media, look, Houston's the favorite here. <laughs> What's the message there from Augie? Why are you trying to downplay your team, keep them motivated? You know, build up the other team. A little sandbagging. A little sandbagging. Zane Gerwitz, the third baseman, steps up for Texas. 
As we move into the third, Gerwitz, Marlowe, and Johnson. And if any of them get on, Mark Payton would come up hit the two-run homer in the fourth. And that is a leadoff single by Gerwitz to get things going in the Texas third. That's a big hit. I know it's early in the game. You know, it's they got a two-nothing lead, but to get your ninth hole batter on base, beautiful job too. Watch the pitch location was actually pretty solid from Jake Lemoyne. Gerwitz able to take it the other other opposite field. Really solid piece of hitting. Now you've got the top of your order. You mentioned the dangerous Mark Payton coming up. Now he's in the hole. So here's Marlowe, and he yeah. shows. But you talk about Gerwitz too over at first. Yes, he is the nine hole hitter, but that's because Augie Garrido likes his speed so much. He's not your typical number nine hitter. 71, uh, 279 average. I want to welcome in those of you watching us on ESPN2, those of you who just watched Vanderbilt take care of Stanford, though it got a little iffy for the Commodores. After the 10 nothing start, Dari Noka, Danny Cannell, Kaylee Hartung here with you at the dish in Austin, Texas. A two-run homer for Mark Payton in the third inning has provided all the scoring in this game to this point as Texas leads it two to nothing. So after the Brooks Marlowe sacrifice bunt, Ben Johnson, the left fielder, steps in with a runner on second. By the way, the sack bunt for Texas was number 95 on the season. That leads the nation. I don't know if you noticed it either, Dar, but that was a really solid sack bunt, too. It was no gimme for Houston defensively to get the out, either. With the speedy Zane Gerwitz. Augie likes how Gerwitz sets the table for the top of the order with that speed. And you know a base hit would in all likelihood get him home as that's fouled back. And caught on one bounce. Well done. Well, defensively, for both these teams, for Houston and Texas, you better be on your toes. You're going to have to ex execute. You're going to have to make the tough out. Both lineups very disciplined. They're going to put the ball in play most of the time. See Mark Payton right there. Two run homer in the first. Has provided the difference so far for Texas. His second home run of the year. That pitch is high. One and two now to Johnson, the left fielder. Fastest player on this team right there. Ben Johnson, they say it isn't even close. Clocked at a 6-4-60. Is that moving? Woo. I'll take That's that fast. as a yes. I don't, yeah. I don't think I ever saw that speed. <laughs> <laughs> Your receivers yeah, That's right. One, two to Johnson outside, two and two. Beautiful forecast for the weekend here in Austin. Low, not, low to mid 90s. Yes, a little steamy. Rain really not a part of the equation. You and I had a super last year in Chapel Hill that was supposed to end on a Sunday. It went till Tuesday. <laughs> so we'll take this. Yes. <laughs> Any day. Our wives have some idea when we'll be home. <laughs> the two and two to Johnson. Swing and a miss. And Lemoyne picks up his second strike out of the afternoon. There's that slider for Jake Lemoyne. That's been his most effective pitch of the afternoon. Well, here comes the difference maker to this point. The lefty Mark Payton in the first. Sends that into the Houston bullpen. To give Texas a 2-0 lead on his second home run of the season. And striking out Johnson was big there. Now you got two outs. You can be a little bit more cautious with Payton. You know, if you give up a walk, it's not the worst case scenario. Now yeah, we see how Lemoyne approaches. <laughs> but both these teams, the pitching, the staffs, they don't give up a lot of walks. No. So even though they might be cautious, they just pound the strike zone. And we talked a lot about the, the coaches, but the pitching coaches for these two teams might be two of the best as well, and Frank Anderson and Skip Johnson. By the way, we have just received news 
that Mark Payton was actually just drafted. Of course, the Major League Draft is going on yeah. right now. He was drafted. I don't even know if he knows this yet. <laughs> this news not. came to me a minute ago by the New York Yankees. And that is a high pop-up. In comes the third baseman, Hollis. He will make the catch. Perhaps it wasn't as easy as we thought it might be. As we move to the bottom of the third, two zip. Longhorn. Welcome back to Austin, where the Longhorns have the lead two to nothing over Houston as we head into the bottom of the third. I'm with Parker French, the expected starter for Texas tomorrow. Parker, how do you describe what you've seen from the Houston lineup so far? Um, they've been really aggressive, uh, which we expected. Uh, they're going to swing early in the count, swing at a lot of fastballs, and you know that's the that's the pitch that they're hunting. So it's kind of what we expected coming in. You had the mound for seven innings in the Texas win back on March 1st. How is this Houston team different from the one you saw that day? Um, honestly, they, they look pretty similar. Um, I think their approaches are, are a little bit of the same. Um, but, you know, they obviously look a little bit more comfortable because we're later in the year. And it looks like they've adjusted to some breaking balls. So that's something we're going to have to deal with. Thanks, Parker. Thank you. Sorry. All right, Kaylee, thank you very much. Parker French, the Saturday Game 2 starter for Texas. Seven, eight, nine due up here for Houston in the third. Josh Vidalis, the second baseman, starts things off. You know, we talked, Danny, about Peyton, and we just share the news that Mark Peyton out in center field got drafted by the Yankees just a few minutes ago. They don't want him to know that. <laughs> we'll tell him after the game. Right. He, he doesn't know. We're sharing news that, that Mark does not know. It's such a different process than NFL, and I was lucky enough to get drafted NFL and baseball. And it's still, it, you're talking about guys in the middle of their season. What a distraction. Yeah. It must be a coach's nightmare, you know, to try to keep that info from them, try to keep them, you know, focused on extending their season as long as they can. And I think, too, where you can run into problems are with pitchers who are trying to get to Omaha. Oh, no or doubt. In Omaha. Yeah. And you've got to sometimes cringe a little bit if you're a major league scout coach GM when you see a kid going maybe on two two days rest or going 128 <laughs> pitches deep for a center fielder not necessarily as big an issue when we were in North Carolina last year doing that super you were talking earlier about and they actually told I believe it was Colin Moran they told him he was drafted during the game and you could see him kind of celebrating a little bit and then it's like all right well you're, you're up next inning you know you yeah. gotta go back out there and do it but I mean, I know, you know, you hear you're going to get drafted certain places. Your mind's probably wandering. Hey, I didn't go the first day in the first couple rounds. Where am I going to go? You're starting to get slotted a lot. I do, yeah. You know, there's a third to the 10th round today. You know, where did I go? The Dallas, that's a base hit in the right field. So for the second straight inning, Houston with a leadoff single. I mean, and, and you know Mark Payton, again, just drafted by the Yankees. He's... This game, you know, is, is, is foremost in his mind. Right. You almost wonder if just telling him it right. happened, <laughs> right. now he can get it out of his head, right? right? And now I all would, the attention is on this game. I, I don't would, know that you can't. You can do that, couldn't you? I would tend to lead that way. I mean, now he's sitting there wondering, right. is my name been called <laughs> right. yet? Oh, this ball's coming. I wonder if somebody in the stands, like, you know, secretly telling him yes, or, you know, <laughs> holding up a sign with seventh round. No, Roger Collins. Clemens in the stadium yeah. somewhere. Yeah, you're a Yankee. Right. <laughs> that is cool. That was one of the teams that drafted me, and that was one of the just being drafted by the Yankees. You know that brand. That's a cool feeling. Oh, I bet it was. Yeah. Caleb Barker, the catcher, stands in. Look at this. I'm a little surprised. Houston not laying one down, trying to cut into this lead. Might have been taking a strike there. Does before it, they put something on. If it's still scoreless, does the approach change? Uh, I, I know we're early. Yeah, still. I think it's still early enough where you'd have the same approach as you would, you know, if it was 0-0. That pitch just outside, one and one. The Dallas 11 of 14 in stolen base attempts this season. You talk about small ball. It was in out in Corvallis doing that regional in UC Irvine. I mean, they were automatic. Lead-off guy was a bunt no matter what. I mean, they were their hardcore small ball. And they 
You're getting it were right too late the, the for right somebody <laughs> on the East Coast. I <laughs> missed most of that. <laughs> 11 o'clock yeah. Eastern time start. But it was a good series. It was. It was a lot of fun, yep. The broadcasting was a little suspect, but. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of many national seeds. Oregon State was the yeah. number one national seed. Got knocked off by Irvine. What a strange oh. season, isn't it? Just I, a it, strange season. We Post talked season. about it a bunch, you know, throughout the season. Just parody. Parody was kind of the word of college baseball, the buzzword. And sure enough, it's proven to be true throughout the postseason as well. So kind of that feel. Anybody could win. Look what UCLA did last year. You wonder yeah. who's going to be the UCLA of this year. And they hit about 240. You know, that's, that's a, you want to look at a Texas team. Now, Texas is hitting much better, but they're not lighting it up offensively. But they have a very deep pitching it's all It is. I mean, you talk about these two teams are built really way, well to make a deep run. When you look at the formula of college baseball now, they both pitch really, really, really well. You have a deep staff. They don't depend on homers. Houston has 17 this season. Texas has 20. You don't, you're not going to hit him at, in Omaha. Ground ball, third. Won't try for two there. No shot at second for Zane Gurwitz. One away, now one in scoring position for Houston. So here's what the bracket looks like as our coverage of the NCAA baseball championship continues with super regional action tonight. You got UC Irvine and Oklahoma State, and the winner out of Stillwater there will face the winner out of Austin in their opener, the College World Series. And then the other side of the bracket, well, you see one of those great surprises, two of them actually. Texas Tech goes to Miami. Knocks off the Canes. Charleston goes to Gainesville as a four seed there and knocks uh, knocks out everybody there. Florida, North Carolina, and Long Beach State. It's a strange ride it's been so far as that ball is popped, but caught by Casey Clemens. So Appling retired on one pitch. was not an easy play. No, Casey Clemens, I mean, it is a bright, sunny day. It's kind of a tweener little Texas leaguer there. Clemens, you mentioned it, a solid defensive play at first, first base. One of the big reasons he's stuck in this lineup. So we go to the top of the Cougar order, set a right fielder, Kyle Servans. Flew out to left his first time up. And a first pitch strike from Thornhill. Five hits in this game, each one of them to right field. That's not important, it's just somewhat random. Servants, ground ball, Hinojosa. Two innings in a row, Houston's had the leadoff man aboard. Two innings in a row. They have not gotten him home. Two nothing horns. All right. This is the NCAA Baseball Super Regionals presented by Capital One. We welcome you back to UFCU Dish Falk Field here at the University of Texas. And it's the Longhorns with a two nothing lead. Two in the first on a two run homer by center fielder Mark Payton. And that's all that's been happening so far. Dory Noka, Danny Cannell, Kaylee Hartung down on the field as Jake LeMoyne begins his fourth inning of work. Just through his 51st pitch, thing that kind of stands out to you is 25 of those, half of those came in that first inning where he struggled a little bit, and Mark Payton did that damage with the two-run home run. The catcher, Tress Barrera, swings and misses, and quickly LeMoyne is up 0-2, and he's been ahead of hitters yes. since that first yeah. inning. And that was what kind of got him in trouble, too. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what level you're playing, <laughs> you know, Little League, high school, college, work ahead. I mean, any pitching coach, that's what they're going to tell you. Get ahead. Here comes the 0-2 to Barrera outside, 1-2. and LeMoyne is... Scheduled to play for the USA Baseball Collegiate National Team this summer. Comes in 265 earned run average, but a 6 and 7 record. Just a, a victim of a lot of bad luck at times when he starts. 
Ground ball, shortstop, nicely played by Ratcliffe. Over the first for the out. Frankie Ratcliffe showcasing a little bit of range. He stumbled a little bit right there. Kind of got his cleat caught up, but was able to come up and make a strong throw in plenty of time. As you would expect, both these teams are real solid defensively. Not going to gift you a lot of base runners. You have to earn your way on base. How about since the two-run homer to Mark Payton as Madison Carter steps in? Carter fouls that one back. Since that, LeMoyne has thrown 40 pitches, 31 for strikes. Pounding that strike zone. That was what was a little bit, when you're watching that first inning unfold, it was just a little bit unusual. And he, you know, Jake Lemoyne, you got to remember, he's a sophomore, younger guy. He's been in this situation. I think that's kind of the biggest hurdle. Once you get through that first inning, you breathe a sigh of relief. Hey, it wasn't that bad. You know, I made one mistake. All right, let's go back out there. And now he's definitely settled into this game. Looked like a curveball that came in, and it was hit into right field, but it sneaks into area out of play there beyond the right field seats or the right field foul territory seats. If you look at the area there beyond the railing, there are some temporary bleachers there in right field. The same thing over at left we'll show you in just a bit. Over in left field, there were more sets of those temporary bleachers. I'm looking here, we're in the press box, and what, six, seven sets of those things yeah. maybe in all? And those are the extra 300 plus seats that have brought capacity for this series up to 7,600. Again, it is sold out all the way through. So now Carter sits with a full count. Madison Carter grounded out to second his first time up. And he takes the walk. For more coverage of the NCAA baseball tournament and for interactive brackets, make sure you check out NCAA.com. Shortstop Hinojosa now steps in, runner on first, one away here in the Texas fourth. Texas looking for a 35th trip to the College World Series. In super regional games, Danny, they are 15 and 6 all time. And that includes three games against the same Houston program back in 2002. That was a two games to one win for the Longhorns right here. Houston's been to three prior Supers. 2000, they lost to San Jose State at home. 2002, they were here, lost to Texas. 2003, lost to Rice. Now 2-0 to Hinojosa. Texas with just a remarkable postseason history, as you can see. 56 appearances, six national championships, 34 trips to Omaha in the College World Series. The last two seasons without them, even in postseason play, just unbelievable, really, watching the NCAAs without Texas in it. Now Houston, the beating at the yeah. mound. What's the difference here with Lemoyne later? Well, you know, it was interesting because we jinxed him, of course. I mean, you talked about how he was settling into the game. He was getting ahead of batters, and then all of a sudden he kind of just fell apart again a little bit, and Frank Anderson went out, had a little visit, kind of calmed him down. Hey, let's roll one on the ground. We'll roll up a double play for you. I, mean, I don't know if he's, you know, something mechanically that Anderson noticed from the dugout. Well, that man right there, Frank Anderson, According to Todd Whitting, the Houston head coach, and I think probably several others in the game, as Hinojosa singles in the left field, and now two on with one out here in the Texas four. And that's what happens. When you fall behind the count, you make average hitters really good hitters. 
When you go 2-0, that hitter can dial in. Especially you just had a visit to the mound. You know, you, you got to expect I'm getting a strike. That pitch, you can really dial in, find something you like. And sure enough, exactly what happened. So activity now going to fire up in the Houston pen. But back to Frank Anderson. This was the pitching coach for Augie Garrido here from 2000 to 2003. Went to Oklahoma State, took over as head coach. And, uh, and now he finds himself in his third season at Houston. As that could be two and in the inning. Radcliffe to second. Over to first. It's thrown away. Coming home is the third Texas run of the afternoon. So Carter scores in just the second Houston error in the last eight games has made it 3-0 Texas. That's what these teams do. They put a lot of stress on you defensively. Saw Radcliffe with the flip. Vidalis just trying to make that hustle, just trying to hurry it up a little bit. You know, in that situation, if you realize you're not going to get it, sometimes it's better to eat the ball. Don't throw it. So a 3-0 lead here for Texas as Casey Clemens comes to bat. So it may be a bit of a busier afternoon for Frank Anderson, the Houston pitching coach, who Todd Whitting says he is the head coach of the pitching staff. I make no decisions about pitching. It is entirely in his hands. Didn't know the starter for today until this morning because that's when Anderson wanted to make the decision. The ball is outside now 2-0 and oh, and Moyne has found a world of trouble here in the fourth. Again, you're getting deep. This is the eighth hitter in the lineup. He's hitting around 200. You should be pounding the strike zone, getting ahead of him. Because right now, Casey Clemens at the plate, he can be very selective. He can find something he likes. If it's his liking, he can give it a rip. Seconds. Hammered into right field. That ball's off the wall. Nearly got out. Shaw stays at third. It is a long single for Casey Clemens, who missed a home run by what? Out. Three feet? That ball was really close to getting out of here in a hurry, too, because that ball didn't have much lift on it. That was a seed. Watch it. 2-0. He gets something right in his power alley that he likes. Watch how close this is to going out oh. of here. About three feet below that wall. Very well hit ball by Clemens. He stands on first. Now Shaw is at third for Zane Gerwitz, who did single back in the third. You just feel that in this game, and the way Thornhill's throwing, Lemoyne cannot allow another run to cross. And he catches it just on the foul side of the foul line. But another run in for Texas on a Cougar error. 3-0 Horns. The NCAA Baseball Super Regionals is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. And in part by Quickrete. Visit quickrete.com. Quickrete, it's what America's made of. Welcome back to Austin at the Dish. Texas leading 3-0 here as we move into the bottom of the fourth. If you didn't see this yesterday, well, you're glad. be glad we're showing it to you now. This was just a couple of miles south of here as the X Games are going on. The half pipe with the state capital in the background just as cool a scene as I've ever seen in an X Games and a packed house too. you see those fans oh. lined up in the street what a cool backdrop let's head over and catch some of that tomorrow night I was sitting near a couple on the plane yesterday from Charlotte who it was an anniversary present to just to come to the to come really? hang out of the X Games here yeah I said there's also baseball going on I said huh <laughs> come on come on <laughs> Priorities here, right? I'm telling you, <laughs> 7,600 people here who would beg to differ. 
But that's an unbelievable scene there. Uh, that 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 backdrop. Wow. Michael Pyatt, two, three, four, coming up for Houston here in the bottom of the fourth. Kaylee Harton down in the field who lives here. So that's about 10 blocks from here. See, you can do both. Close, do it man. all. Make yeah. it a sports weekend. Boy, Thornhill's been impressive. Hasn't he? Now you can see why. Yeah. One earned run in 22 and two thirds coming in over four stars. His ERA in general is minuscule coming in 1.49. So the scene there was from yesterday. Don't miss the world's greatest extreme athletes as they compete on Action Sports Ultimate Stage. Tonight, it's the Men's Moto X Best Whip Final, Moto X Step Up Final, and the Skateboard Big Air Final. X Games Austin at 8 Eastern on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. What do you do with that? That's well, that's the thing, too. And we, we talked to Parker, when Kaylee talked to Parker French, he said, hey, we know they like to try to live off the fastball early in the count. So what do you do? With Thornhill, you start, start him off that off-speed pitch, which is just filthy. Called a game in Norman earlier this season, and he was on the mound against Oklahoma, and he was just electric. He... It was about a two-hour weather delay. He came back out after that. was just as good as he was in the beginning. With an 8-1 Texas win that day. He's been consistent start to finish this season as Casey Grayson fouls that off. Ten of his last 12 pitches have been strikes. And the thing that really sticks out to you is working ahead and counts. Getting ahead. 0-1, 0-2, 1-2 right here. You keep those batters, you keep the hitters guessing this way. And they've got to be, you know, they change their approach with two strikes. They're going to choke it up. They're not going to be as free swinging. They've got to be a little bit more defensive in their philosophy. So you've got the, uh, you've got the advantage if you're Thornhill. So the 2 2 coming to Grayson. Now back will stay two and two. Now we talk about Houston defensively. Texas is also very good defensively. A three nothing lead at this point with him on the mound. You love your chances if you are a fan of the burnt orange. Grayson, well hit left field. Johnson retreats. And that's two down. Maybe the ballpark with a short porch and left that gives somebody a scare, but not here. 340 down that left field line. And the wind blowing grass. Out. Pretty yeah. healthy out that yeah. way as well. So the shortstop Radcliffe steps in. He did single in his first at bat, one of two Cougar singles. As you can see the wind. The flags because of the wind. Not sure how that impacts the half pipe. <laughs> it looks scary regardless of wind yeah. conditions. Yeah, you're not kidding. <laughs> or cool backdrop. You know, I wonder on a uh, Thursday uh, afternoon like that was yesterday or early evening. How much work is being done there at the Capitol? Because I'm looking out my window at that thing. You know what I mean? Uh, that's what I'm watching. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. You know, I got a great view. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, you, cut out of, you cut off work earlier. A little early. Yeah. Two and one now to Frankie Ratcliffe. That one was clocked at 90. I think he wanted to throw it about 112. <laughs> All right. Now for, you know, we've been talking about him getting into, you know, ahead of batters now. Let's see if Ratcliffe in this hitter's count, if he can dial in on something. Well, he fouls that one. 
Fouls it off, so we go full now. Two outs, full count here in the bottom of the fourth. Three nothing, Texas. In game one of this Austin based Super Regional. Couple of two seeds that did damage away from home last weekend. Houston, of course, in Baton Rouge, and Texas did it in Houston. Ratcliffe, center field. Peyton, he's got that. So we're through four here at the dish, and it's all home team. Kind of. One. Welcome back here in Austin, where Texas leads Houston three to nothing. Joined now by Houston's coach Todd Whitting. Coach, you've said Frank Anderson makes all of your pitching decisions, right. but what have you made of Jake Lemoyne's performance thus far? Well, he's battling pretty good. You know, he made a mistake there to Peyton, three-two pitch, and you know Peyton's one of the best hitters in college baseball, and he just did what you're supposed to do with a fastball down the middle. So you got to tip your hat to him. We just got to keep playing. As far as your batter's approach at the plate to Nathan Thornhill, what needs to change to get a run on the board? Well, we got to stop trying to hit all of them. He's got three pitches he's throwing for a strike, so we got to just stop. You know, we got to learn to get our pitch and do something with it when we have the chance. Thanks, Coach. Sorry. Kaylee, thank you. Yeah, it's been smooth sailing for Nathan Thornhill to this point for Texas through four innings, giving up just two Houston hits, both leadoff singles that turned into nothing because of. Thornhill's ability on the mound of the defense behind him. Top of the Texas order here to start off the fifth. Brooks Marlowe, Ben Johnson, and Mark Payton. Marlowe, a successful day at the plate so far. A single and then a sacrifice bunt. It's nearly turned into a second hit of the day. Inside two and one. You can just see Lemoyne. He's, he's just exerting more effort. I mean, when you watch Thornhill, it's a little bit more effortless, and it just sometimes it looks like you're working harder. That ball well hit right center field. Center fielder Appling slides over to make the play one down. Be sure to catch some. Sunday night baseball on ESPN as Big Poppy leads the Red Sox against Miguel Cabrera and the Detroit Tigers. Sunday night baseball presented by Taco Bell. Red Sox and Tigers, 8 Eastern ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. Ben Johnson, the left fielder, steps in. The Red Sox got it right after 10 straight losses, didn't they? They, <laughs> they finally back a got bit. it turned around. Yeah. Yeah. Just off the plate. So now 2 0 to Johnson. He scored on Mark Payton's two run home run back in the first. There's pitch number 76 now from Lemoyne. His ball three to Johnson. Again, just this is something that Todd Whitting and Frank Anderson, as you see the frustration. Hey, let's work ahead. Come on, 3 0. And that's that's when to me when you really know a pitcher is struggling. When it's 3-0, I mean you know the hitter's probably gonna take. Just groove one down there and the Moyne can't still can't find the zone. It's not even close. I think that's when you can really tell. It's just kind of it's a struggle today for Jake Lemoyne. He's trying to battle through it. Well Barker goes out to talk to his sophomore pitcher, and this is not what you want. A runner on base for Mark Payton. Especially a runner who's 20 for 20. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just, yeah. on base attempts. And Peyton's home run there on the first made it an even 100 consecutive games reaching base. Yes, yeah, so you just walked the batter four straight pitches, and now you got to face the guy who took you deep in the first inning. Well, first pitch swinging. High, shallow center field, and Appling makes the catch. Boy, you got to feel good there if you're Coach Whitting and Frank Anderson that he went on the first pitch and took a hack. So now two down here in the top of the fifth, and the catcher, Tres Barrera, steps up. 0 for 2 so far this afternoon. Two run homer for Mark Payton in the first, and then 
A throwing error by Josh Vidalis in the fourth allowed another run to score. Madison Carter crossed the plate. That's how we sit 3 nothing Texas here in game one of this Austin Super Regional. Off for second, the runner Marlowe and slides in safely. As Vidalis cannot make the play, I'm not sure it would have been in time anyhow. Make that Johnson, who's now 21 for 21 in stolen base attempts. Johnson got a great jump. And that's just speed right there. Just too fast. Yeah, he's safe playing, either way. Yeah, yeah, playing on a fast surface. Yeah, and even if the ball had been held on to, he was still coming in under that tag in plenty of time. So now a fourth run of the game in scoring position here with two outs for Barrero. You see Bubba Maxwell getting loose for Texas. In fact, a couple of Houston, rather. Matt Locus also loosening up. He would have been the lefty in there. And Bubba the righty. Maxwell, a sophomore. Right handed. Locus, a junior lefty. Frank Anderson would love to see Lemoyne get through this inning. One and two coming. Time is called. Loudly called. <laughs> you gotta make sure everybody hears it, right? <laughs> <laughs> we heard Paul Gooley the whole plate up, no doubt. So we'll set up shop, try it again. Barrera at the dish. Johnson on second. Now two and two. The freshman catcher with a chance to deliver a big hit here. Johnson scores easily for Zip Texas. So how about that? Texas baseball, right? Yep. Steal the runner. You send him on that pitch, and there was no play at the plate. Probably wouldn't have been one either way. No, just a fastball groove right down the middle. Pereira. Beautiful piece of hitting right there. And as you saw, Ben Johnson, it'd be nice to have that perfect record of stealing bases to have you on. So now Barrera stands at first for Madison Carter, the DH. Barrera, not quite the threat on the bases Johnson was. He's yet to attempt a stolen base this season. Wouldn't expect one here. You know, and if you're Houston, you don't want to go to the pen too early. And there's a, you know, it's two out of three series here in, in Austin. You want to try to get as much as you can out of Jake Lemoyne. And they got a couple guys up, though. I don't, you're kind of wondering how long this will last. Well, he fooled Madison Carter there. You know, one and two is Todd Whitting. This is why he says Frank Anderson is the head coach of pitchers here. He doesn't he, worry about he that. He doesn't decision. worry about it. He's got a, he's got his hands full trying to figure out how to get on the board here against Thornhill when he heads back out in the fifth. That's outside now two and two. Boy, Lemoyne is laboring, isn't he? Yeah. Full activity in the Cougar bullpen. Well hit, center field, drifting towards the gap. It is down. Cut off by Apple. Barrera not going to try to come home. It's a double for Carter. Carter's sixth double of the season. And the inning gets longer for Houston.
We talked about the size of this ballpark, how big it is. That ball has driven deep in the gap, and it was a good thing Appling played that ball correctly because that could have easily gotten to the fence. And now I think it is decision time for Houston, and they're going to make a change. Frank Anderson has seen enough. That'll do it for Jake Lemoyne. By the way, for Carter, standing at second with a double, a 15-game hitting streak. As you see, Bubba Maxwell, the 5'11 sophomore, come into the game for Houston. We'll introduce you to him and continue with the top of the fifth in a moment. <laughs> Been a rough go for Jake Lemoyne here in game one of this Austin, Texas Super Regional. Four earned in four and two thirds his day. Uh, maybe physically done, but the numbers could continue to pile up as he's responsible for two in scoring position with two outs here in the top of the fifth. All right, so we introduce you to the new pitcher for Houston, sophomore Bubba Maxwell. 5'11, 185. What might we see? From Bubba. I think you know you're gonna see another guy typical of Houston pitcher, somebody who pounds the strike zone. His velocity, the scouting report says he's up there in the mid to upper 90s. We'll have to watch and keep an eye on that. See if he, if he does, <laughs> that'll be impressive. Now well, the first batter he'll face is the shortstop CJ Hinojosa, who singled in the fourth. One for two today is Hinojosa. Two in scoring position. This is an enormous situation for Maxwell to step into. You know, Again, if, the if, way that Thornhill's pitching for if, Texas. If you're Houston, you get out of this. It could, it's huge for you. You've got to keep this score manageable. So one and one now to C.J. Hinojosa. You know, because it does feel, I mean, Texas has completely owned this game to this point. You talk from a momentum standpoint and on the board, but it's still only 4-0. And I think that's the message you've got to tell your team if you're Todd Whitting. You know, if you get out of this jam, this is almost one of those moments you got to pull them up and say, hey, look, as bad as it's been, we're still right there. And Texas has delivered with runners on base this afternoon, 5 of 11 in that situation, and that's obviously where they sit now. So that is outside, 3 and 1 now to Hinojosa. The right fielder, Connor Shaw, is a ball away from getting a bases loaded opportunity at play at the plate. Center field. Appling. Makes the play. Bubba Maxwell did his job. Did not allow the other two to score. Four zip Texas. As we're halfway through this one in Austin. Welcome back to Austin, where the tailgating continues through the game as Texas has a 4-0 lead over Houston. I'm joined now by Texas coach Augie Garrido. Coach, what was your reaction to that two-run home run by Mark Payton to set the tone in the first inning of this game? Disbelief. There, haven't, there hasn't been very many home runs here. And so until you see them go over the fence, you don't think they're going over the fence. Confidence and leadership are two qualities we've seen Nathan Thornhill exhibit throughout the season. How do you describe what he's shown you on the mound? Well, he and he and Mark uh, came back for one sole purpose, and this is it. And they're getting their chance to execute. And without their leadership, we wouldn't be here. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Sorry. Kaylee, how good is that? Disbelief. 21 home runs hit by Texas this season, including that one. That is now the fifth in this ballpark this season. So Mark Payton providing the punch there in the first, and they've added two more since. Four nothing as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Dari Noka, Danny Cannell, and Kaylee down there on the field. Four, uh, rather five, six, seven. Montemayor going to start things off for Houston. I'm glad he said it because I was shocked. We were both shocked. Yeah. We were talking. We were, yeah. you know, promoting this as a small ball matchup. All of a sudden, we're looking foolish. But at least Alga Garrido has our back, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think Houston would agree it's it's small ball here. They they need to find something. Maybe a third leadoff single is the answer. The first two haven't worked for them, but Montemayor starts things off well in the fifth. You're Other right. than the leadoff guy, Thornhill's cruised. Yeah. Third base He hasn't really felt much pressure. You know, there haven't been any tight situations that he's had to get out of. That's when you talk about effort, looking at Lemoyne versus Thornhill. Thornhill is just kind of effortlessly, his mechanics look 
really smooth, just been pounding the strike zone, and he's been getting some solid defense behind him. So Connor Hollis, the third baseman, now steps in. And he's ahead 1-0. Now they check over there on Montemayor. Montemayor did not play in that championship game against LSU on Monday. Why? Because he was ejected in the previous game for arguing a safe out call. So he missed it. And it didn't get to be a part of that there in Baton Rouge on Monday. Ball is fouled back. Freshman All-American last year, Justin Montemayor. Stands on first. Again, the third time the leadoff man for Houston here in five innings. The third time he's been on base. They haven't been able to get him home. Hollis fouls that one into the mid of Barrera. Nathan Thornhill has faced no more than four batters in an inning so far today. And just uh, you keep seeing these same pitch counts show up 0 2 1 2 and that's a recipe for success even if you don't have good stuff and he's got his good stuff tonight. he's just working yeah. ahead keeping Houston off balance. I'm not sure he has stuff that's not good. No. The second time I've seen him this year he's been just no, fantastic. Both he has been. That one just off the corner I think. Barrera was set up, set up off the plate because he really looked like he hit his spot. And that's when you can tell the guy, he's just hitting his spots no matter where Barrera sets up, sets up behind the plate. Now that ball blooped and it is over the head of the second baseman, Marlowe. And for the first time today, Danny, Houston's got multiple runners on and they have it with nobody out here in the fifth. And that can be a little bit frustrating with Thornhill. You had a pretty good pitch. Little Texas leaguer right over the second baseman's head. Marlowe might have lost that ball in the sun. Might have been Deacon the runner, too, a little bit. From here, it looked close enough to where it, maybe a Deke wasn't the best option. <laughs> I know, right? right? <laughs> that, then I couldn't. I, the replay looked like he might have been, you know, putting up the decoy. But then, you know, watching it unfold, it looked like he did lose it in the sun. So now Josh Vidalis, big opportunity here for the bottom third of the Houston order here in the bottom of the fifth. Vidalis, the seven-hole hitter, second baseman. He does have a base hit in his only plate appearance this afternoon. First time Thornhill has faced trouble. Not just today, but <laughs> in real reality in about a month. Two and zero. Oh. Last four games, .40 ERA. That's remarkable. One earned run in 22 and two thirds coming in. So now you can push that to one earned run in his last 34 and two thirds innings. Make that 26 and two thirds. I was adding up outs as innings. I shouldn't <laughs> do that. <laughs> There's a strike. I had the feeling for Dallas that was just taking all the way to 2-0 -oh count. Seeing how Thornhill faced the situation also might you know just trying to build up the pitch count too, try to make him go deep in these counts see a lot of pitches. That's just there's some discipline there for a college hitter when you, you you're taking one and it's a oh, yeah. fastball down the pipe. <laughs> But Dallas first base off the bat. That's going to score the first Houston run as Montemayor comes home. Three straight hits for Houston, and it's 4 1. Well, we've got a ball game here. Three straight hits, and all in Houston going their way. I mean,. But Dallas just kind of stuck the bat out. He was fooled on the pitch, was able to kind of keep the barrel of the bat on the ball. 
rip it down the line. Then it hits the bag and bounces over Clemens' head, so the run scores. I mean, you talk about some breaks. You get the Texas leaguer, then that one. And that's enough for Skip Johnson to take a visit out there and have a little conversation with Nathan Thornhill. Now, the single by Montemayor was well right, hit. Right, that one was hit well. Hollis was a bloop. <laughs> this is a really bad... Clemens is such a good defensive first baseman. You feel that if that doesn't hit the bat, it wasn't splintered down the line. No. I mean, you know, maybe there's a play there, but as it stands, there's a run in, two on, and nobody out. And how about the damage done for Houston? One through three hitters today are 0 for 6. Four through seven are 5 for 8. And now it's the catcher, Caleb Barker. And if you're Skip Johnson just going out there to the mound to visit with Thornhill, you're just kind of reminding him, hey, let's go back to what got you to this point, work low in the zone, roll up a double play, maybe you give up a run, but let's get out of this jam. And there's a first pitch strike from Thornhill. There is activity down in the Longhorn bullpen as you see Travis Duke and Morgan Cooper getting loose for the Horns. Ground ball right back at Thornhill. Run going to score as he turned around and glanced at Hollis, but he didn't come home. Danny. I, you know, he's, he's really lucky for, kind of lucky that he didn't moose out in the double play, but I'm with you, Dari, when he glanced. If he would have gone to home plate without hesitation, he would have got the runner at home plate. And then when he, when he hesitated and went to second, I was worried he wasn't going to get that double play because you're playing in a situation defensively where, you know, you'll sacrifice two outs to give up the run. But watch when he fields the ball. Right there, the runner on third was in no man's land. He was kind of halfway there. You could have got the lead runner. And fortunately for Thornhill, at least you've still got the double play. And now the bases are cleared with two outs. So two are in for Houston. There's Landon Appling, the center fielder, who popped up to the first baseman. Clemens earlier steps in. <laughs> Thornhill settles right back down. That double play was a big lift for him. You can tell. So the strikeout ends the inning, but not before Houston gets two, and suddenly there's life in these Cougars, 4-2. All right, Matt, thank you very much here in Austin, Texas, a 4-2 Longhorn lead. Mark Payton, two-run homer in the first. But Lemoyne, boy, did he get roughed up. It was a not an easy day. You talked about just everything seemed filled with max effort. And that's not a good thing necessarily uh, in what you mean for Jake Lemoyne. Down no, and credit to Mark Payton, that two-run home run in the first inning really kind of set him back. and He never really recovered. So 7-8-9 coming up for Texas in their half of the sixth. This is Skip Johnson, the pitching coach, having a conversation with Thornhill, who really ran into trouble there in the fifth a few minutes ago for the first time all day as Houston played it two. Colin Shaw. So it's after one and one. Austin Westlake High School. Tremendous defensive right field. We haven't had to see it so far today. But made several phenomenal plays out there this season. He's also a football player in high school, so you can appreciate that, I'm sure. Absolutely. Comes from a football powerhouse, that high school. Maybe that's why every they, time I see Colin Shaw, the name Connor Shaw jumps into my head. <laughs> right? <laughs> they tell me they know how to play a little high school football here in Texas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they know a little something yeah, a little about little that. Bit. Well, high school stadiums are bigger than many, many smaller college ones. 
Not the, the complexion of this game has definitely changed. With Houston getting those two runs, battling their way back in, making a, making a go of it. And they'll go back to the top of the order in the bottom of the sixth as that's fouled into the people. Speaking of people, 7,600 of them here in this game as they will be tomorrow. And if we need a game three on Sunday, the series sold out very, very quickly. Foul back again. We stay two and two. So he's making Bubba Maxwell work here in his second inning. by much full count. And if you're Houston, you don't want to give back that momentum that you just got. I mean, you, you could... You want to get up, get three up, three down, get it back in the dugout, get your guys up to bat again. You don't want to have another long inning where you're like, oh, here we go again. Even if, you know, it's defenders behind Bubba Maxwell, you know, they start getting, oh, here we go. <laughs> just when a pitcher's working quick and he's dealing and he's hitting pound in the strike zone, everybody's just in it a little bit more. Well, you, you've got a little bit of a double play type of threat here with Casey Clemens. You could get out of this. Oh, yeah. Potentially here with. Maybe the right pitch, but of course Clemens may be looking at laying down a bunch. You may not have the opportunity here. Third baseman Hollis way in. There it is. Wow, Clemens. What a phenomenal bunt. Got the out at first. That was a fantastic bunt by Casey Clemens. I am shocked that they fielded that. Bubba Maxwell, that ball was curling foul. And he's lucky he got that was a really tough ball. You saw it, Dari. Great bunt by Clemens laying down the sacrifice. But watch this ball. It's definitely curving. Maxwell actually picked it up on the line. And the throw is not easy. Yeah, no, either. you got to watch out for the runner. Man. I mean, I've always been taught if it's going, it looks like it's going that way and the play's going to be that tough, let it go. Really? It, grab a foul, yeah. Let it go foul. Now Gerwitz is up. He's one for two today, runner at second base, so Texas with a chance here in the sixth to get back one of the two they gave up in the fifth. Every Texas batter has reached base today somehow. Throw over to second, check on Shaw, no problem there getting back. No, the last pitch, he had a huge lead, had a huge secondary lead, so I'm sure. Barker or somebody, the catcher behind the plate or somebody from the dugout said, hey, let's keep a closer eye on him. Let's not make this a gimme if he rips a single. Well, oh, now they've got him in a rundown. Throw down to third, and that's it. Danny, you saw it. They saw it. You saw it. And it cost Texas a runner in scoring position. Yeah, to me, that's, that's really a foolish base running blunder right there. <laughs> I mean, even if you've got a steal on, you've got to recognize that pitcher. I mean, it's not that tough of a move to pick up. And you, can, I, you know, I don't know if there was a steal called there or not, but even if there was, you just can't get picked off in that situation. So now instead of a runner in scoring position and one out, there's nobody on and two outs for Gerwitz. Well, that could be a huge play in this game. The other thing about it too is it wasn't the tricky spin move, you know, where the pitcher lifts his left leg. He just did a, you know, turn move, you know. The Dallas, the second baseman, sprinted to the bag. Gerwitz fouls that back, two and two now. You know, you could maybe understand if he looked like he was going to the plate and picked up that left lead leg. Yeah, we'll see the play at second here in a moment. Right field. Servants 
Camps makes the play. Opportunity potentially lost for Texas. We go to the top of the Houston order. In a moment. Another Super Regional gets underway about 40 minutes from now. Max Pentecost, Mike Rooney, super player. One of the best pure athletes still in Super Regionals, led the country in hits this year. 11th overall pick of the Toronto Blue Jays. He and Kennesaw State visit Louisville, ESPNU, 40 minutes. All right, welcome back to Austin, Texas. As you take a look at the bracket here on the road to Omaha, Oklahoma State, UC Irvine, they get going a little later tonight on ESPNU, and the winner out of Stillwater will then face the winner out of here in Austin uh, in Omaha in their College World Series opener. How about Charleston, a four seed, that took down the Gainesville Regional, Pepperdine, a three seed, Ole Miss, uh, Louisiana, Lafayette. Oh boy, don't, don't expect low scoring games there in Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah. My goodness. So now we go to the bottom of the six. Dari Noka, Danny Cannell, Kaylee Hartung here with you at the dish in Austin, Texas. Top of the Cougar order. Kyle Cervantes, 0 for 2 so far today. In fact, 1, 2, and 3 in the Houston order, 0 for 6 so far today. Ups everywhere in this ballpark. Yes, there are. Servants, <laughs> ground ball, Hinojosa. One down. That'll bring up the left fielder, Michael Pyatt. How about that? Huh? Right field. Yeah, it's a nice setup. I walked setup. past there on the way into the game today. Almost hit him up for a little barbecue. Yeah. Might have hit him up after for sure. I'm, say, I'm glad you said uh, maybe Maybe there. a cold beverage. Yeah. Too. <laughs> <laughs> a nice pop. It is, it is a great back door. I'll tell oh, you what, yeah. college baseball has some great ballparks and some great fan bases too. And, and in the two years of no tournament play for this program, it probably felt like 10 <laughs> yeah. to the fan base here that is used to national championships and at the very least trips to Omaha. I mean, there are there are people from around this neck of the woods that are more familiar with at least the old Rosenblatt Stadium than Omaha natives were. <laughs> yep. You know? Yep. They knew the old market there in Omaha better than those folks did some of them. There's now it's a different ball game, a TD Ameritrade entirely, and one that fits really both of these teams the way they're constructed. Well, you know what's remarkable too is just the turnaround Texas has seen. We know about the rich history, but last year was really a struggle for them, finishing dead last in the Big 12. That's that's it, that, that itself is ridiculous. I remember last year, you know, talking in different games and what was going on out here in Austin, but you knew it wouldn't last long. Pyatt, well hit. That's a base hit. And Pyatt, boy, aggressively rounds first. And of course, he will stay there. But one on and one out here for the Cougars in the sixth. And here comes the first baseman, Casey Grayson. Grayson leads the team coming in 48, runs batted in. 16 doubles also leads. Leads the team in on base, leads the team in slugging. Also, home runs and average. He's done everything for this team. He's also the only Houston Cougar to start all 65 games, including this one this season. And he grounds into what could be a double play. Hinojosa, Mario Clements. Well, it took a funky little skip there, but a nice play by Hinojosa to start the 6-4-3 as we're through 6-4-2 horns. This is the NCAA Baseball Super Regionals presented by Capital One. Here in Austin, Texas, it is the Longhorns with a 4-2 lead as we go into the top of the seventh inning as we welcome you inside 
the booth here where it's not quite as steamy as the 90 plus degrees it it's is. A little toasty. Uh, it's a little <laughs> warm. Yes. Dorian Oka, Danny Cannell here. 4-2 Texas. It it looked like it was on its way to a bit of a runaway, but it's still a two-run game. What have you taken away? That's the thing really that jumps out to me is Texas felt like they were in complete control of this game. You know, starting off early, got the big two-run home run from Mark Payton. And then all of a sudden, Houston's kind of clawed their way back into this game. They've settled into it, and they're very much in contention. But, you know, for a game we thought was going to be low scoring, we've actually seen a little bit of offense. And we're at the top of the Longhorn order here. Brooks Marlowe to start off the seven. Bubba Maxwell now into his third inning of work. Came on in the fifth in relief of Jake Lemoyne, who found a lot of trouble, and that ball is skied into center field. Appling makes it one down. Texas merchandise, and some Texas merchandise take over. I think Augie's got some of his own Texas merchandise. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> ben Johnson's had a busy day. He scored two runs. He's walked. He stole a base. Almost out of room there on that graphic there to tell you what all he's done so far. Sends that one back. Young man took one right off the chest, grabbed it, and held it up. So I'm good. I'm good. So now one and two. Let's see, what are we working with here, Dave? I'm still waiting for some of this stuff to get sent up to the booth, you know? I mean, usually... Well, what is you that? That's just a wet towel. <laughs> you don't need a wet towel. I could use I mean, it. Kaylee's down there on the field. she got to be just in, on the inside <laughs> ripping you right now. <laughs> Thanks, him. And Ben Johnson's eventful afternoon continues as he stands on first. A perfect 21 of 21. In stolen base attempts. Now time for our pick you up moment of the game brought to you by Enterprise Rent a Car and we go back to inning number one. One on for Mark Payton who sends that pitch from Jake Lemoyne into the bullpen. A two run shot his second home run of the year. And Texas was on the board first. And in fact when this season when they've scored in the first inning which they did there. Texas is 20 and 2 on the season. All right, what's the conversation? Ah, you know what it's probably about is the conversation <laughs> is about the threat that Ben Johnson is on first base and Caleb Barker saying, hey, make sure you give me a chance here. A guy who's perfect on the year in stolen bases. Well, the conversation going to get uh, <laughs> a little involved bit more in a little bit more people here, yes. In fact, that's going to do it. Maxwell's day is done. And in comes... A very thick beard. We will introduce you to the bearded cougar in a moment for two text. That'll do it for Bubba Maxwell. One and two thirds, one hit, no runs. Really did uh, a pretty good job coming in to relief of Jake Lemoyne. He gave them exactly what I think they wanted, Danny. Can oh, no, no question about it. Maybe a couple solid innings, keep this game in contention, keep it close. So here's Tyler Ford, who's been absolutely fantastic for Houston all season long. 5'8 senior. Leads the team with 26, now 27 appearances. Very hard thrower. You see the beard as well. 1 2 2 ERA. That's good for sixth nationally. The old, you know, fantasy people talk about the whip, walks and hits per innings pitch. Yep. Second nationally in whip, 0 0.74. How about this? In fact, he's the first reliever in Houston history to get nine wins without making a single start. And obviously, he can strike a guy out. Yeah, it's not going to be easy against this guy, Mark Payton. Got the lefty-lefty matchup here, too. So the center fielder, Payton, with a two-run home run in the first, steps in. One on and one away here in the seventh. 
not only get not only get the lefty lefty matchup at the plate you can hold Ben Johnson over at first base make it a little bit tougher on him to run on you there's a call strike one and one from Ford Mark Payton home run in the first popped up in the third flew to center field in the fifth You've got Ben Johnson 21 of 21 and save opportunities on first but maybe another reason you go with a lefty Danny is to make it a little tougher on Johnson to go absolutely and Johnson's over there at first base trying to get a bead on when he goes to home plate when he's going to throw over it's always a challenge you're seeing you know, lefties are all very unique have different Kind of little tendencies, tough to pick up. Sometimes you just guess. Ground ball, and that is through the hole. Johnson will have to stop at second as Peyton delivers his second hit of the day. Boy, Peyton is tough. He is a tough out. And there's a reason he's been on base. Is it 99 games in a row? Now 100. Yeah, 100 games, games in a row. To stay with it. So the catcher Barrera now steps in. Two on, one out. Big opportunity for Tress Barrera. You talk about double play possibilities. Now well, Houston has one here with Barrera, not the speediest of players at the plate. I wouldn't be completely shocked either if you saw a double steal from Texas. I mean, just you know, with the speed on the bases, Johnson and Peyton, both yeah. of these guys can can move. It's the style of play that you might think Texas would would try something. They were a combined 40 for 41 <laughs> on the bases this season. Peyton's 19 of 20 over there at first. Now, though, you maybe you take that pitch out is is certainly possible with an 0-2 count. Four, five, and six coming up for Houston in the bottom of the seventh. That has been a very dangerous trio so far. Man, it's got to be hot with that beard, right? <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Just missed one and two. That was just off the plate. You know what's hotter than that beard? Is that beard in a suit and tie? That's what's hotter. <laughs> <Out there. laughs> Oh, there's a trick. We need one of those up here, too. It's like 78 <laughs> in this little booth. <laughs> You're from it's Miami. It's perfect. I'm not complaining. All right. <laughs> one and two remains the count. You'd think you'd, like, lived in, you know, <laughs> Minnesota your whole life. <laughs> No, this is this is baseball weather. This is a perfect afternoon. One and two coming from Ford to Barrera. Two on, one out. Top seven. And they check it. Ben Johnson again. Throughout the day, whether he's uh, been on first or anywhere else, they've kept their eye closely on him. He still has a stolen base. And he was stealing third when they hit him in. Remember, he was, he was attempting That's right. to steal. He got a base hit. say that at this park I mean in what <laughs> looks like dirt it's all turf except the mound here that <laughs> UFCU dish cloth field all turf they have 
grown leaps and bounds as far as what they can do with field turf. And it does play much more similar to natural surface, but it's not, it's not dirt. <laughs> no. It just looks like it. Barrera fouls it back two and two. Big moment for Texas yeah. here in the seventh. You would love all the insurance you can get. It's a big moment for Houston, too, if they want to stay yep. competitive in this game. Texas scored the first four runs. Houston got two in the fifth as we sit in the seventh. Off speed, that is back here. Good, tough at bat from Trace Burke, Tres Barrera. And this is a typical kind of Texas hitter. I mean, you're going to see a lot of pitches. You're going to be disciplined. You're not going to swing at balls out of the strike zone, and you're going to battle up there with two strikes. Now Barker, the catcher, going to go chat with four. It's a lot of beer. <laughs> Concerned about lip reading, I see. The gloves yeah. covering. <laughs> yeah. Andrew Landtrip, 6'1 freshman, getting loose now. American Athletic Conference Rookie of the Year this season. Well, there is some serious strategy being employed here. 2-2 two, two, coming to Barrera. Eighth pitch of the at-bat. Senior to freshman. Freshman hands in. And this crowd appreciates it. You know, you talk about knowledgeable baseball crowds. This is as, as knowledgeable as there is. They are not only very loyal and passionate, but they know the game in these parts. There is no question. Inside, he's worked in full now. Ford tried to go back to the pitch that was just fouled off. Barrera able to spit at it and bring this count to full. It's a really good battle right now going on. Johnson on second, Peyton on first. A lot of speed on the bases. Huge moment at the dish. Tyler Ford, the senior, wins that battle. Boy, that did not go easily, though. Credit Barrera for the fight, but Tyler Ford reared back and threw the fastball right about him. Fastball away at 92 miles an hour after he showed him a couple off-speed pitches. What a great battle and a strong performance from Tyler Ford. The crowd was starting to get into it, and he quieted him pretty, pretty quick. Madison Carter, the DH, comes in. He doubled in his last at bat in the fifth. One for two, also has a walk today. Oh, he's bringing it, isn't he? Yeah. This is like one of the best relief pitchers, folks, in the country. I like the way he challenges these right-handed batters, too. Really not afraid to bring it right in their kitchen, bring it inside in that inner portion of the plate. Two now from four to Madison Carter. I believe I just gave you. In fact, Tyler Ford to Madison Carter. Those are four presidential names. <laughs> right? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Ford, Madison Carter. <laughs> In the capital city of Texas. Got it. And the 600 or so Houston fans love what they got from Tyler Ford.
Jeff Gardner, American Athletic Conference Player of the Year, but one for 12 in the regional. The beardless Cardinal getting ready for Kennesaw State over on ESPNU, Dari. Ah, uh, Chick, thank you, sir. Matt Chick, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> so we welcome you back to uh, Austin. Five national seeds eliminated in the regionals. Just a, a remarkable. Just three of them left. College of Charleston, number one, a four seed there at Gainesville. They move on as they visit Texas Tech. Texas Tech, Houston, Texas, and TCU. Four teams from Texas among the 16 left. Four Big 12 teams as well uh, when you take out Houston from there and bring in Oklahoma State. What a season it's been uh, for the Big 12 Conference, too. No question about it. When you see Louisville coming up next, Houston beat them in the American Championship. Yep. Great year for the state of Texas. Not so great for the state of Florida. No, <laughs> no, you're right. Frankie Ratcliffe fooled on that pitch from Thornhill. He was into his seventh inning of work. 73 pitches to this point. 52 of them have gone for strikes. He started pitching with that type of efficiency you'll start seeing a lot of complete games yeah. Change up his got that's his pitch right there he's just pulling the string on that and how key would it be for Texas not to have to touch a reliever either in this series oh that'd be huge if you, if you can keep your bullpen intact you know it, it, even if you can go you know eight innings get go deep and only have to use a closer it's just a huge advantage and then you know if you're faced with a game three situation to be able to have pretty much everybody at your disposal so here's Montemayor singled in the fifth and then scored and he's behind 0 and 1 Thornhill really only ran into trouble in the fifth that's when Houston scored twice rebounded nicely in the sixth bruising so far in the seventh It was that fifth inning when they had three singles back to back to back. Other than that, though, Thornhill has been a machine. And one and two now to Montemayor, who is from Anderson High School, right here in Austin, actually. We hook them horns all over this ballpark, all over this town. One two from Thornhill. Fouled back. Noka, Danny Cannell, Kaylee Hartung here. UFCU Dish Falk Field in Austin. Two and two. Oh, there you go. Let's look from that truck. Yeah. That's a pretty good view back there, too, isn't it? I, I would say that is a good look, yeah. That home run ball from Peyton yeah, didn't go too far from them. Right? They might have got a souvenir out there. Outside, three and two. So Montemayor making Thornhill work here. Montemayor one for two. On deck is Connor Hollis, who's one for two. And behind him is Josh Vidalis, who is two for two. It's been a dangerous part of the Houston order here. What a nice at bat from Montemayor, who stands on first. One out here in the second. Well, that's got to be frustrating for Thornhill, too. He started off this inning really strong. Made Montemayor look a little foolish on a couple of those swings. I'm surprised he wasn't anywhere near the strikes on You see the efficiency, you know, even in the fifth inning, which was the run, you know, the run scoring in him for Houston, still only 16 pitches. But again, you know, if you're Skip Johnson, his pitching coach, you know, if there's something to just remind you, hey, roll up a double play. Your yep. defense behind you has been stellar on the afternoon. Just throw something low in the strike zone, dial up a ground ball. Oh, Hollis fooled on that pitch. 
Texas entered the day tied for 10th nationally in double plays with 62. They love the middle infield there, Hinojosa and Marlowe, and they've got three more today. Hollis out of Arlington, Texas. And two straight outside fastballs, two straight swinging strikes. He's got Hollis on his heels right now, who's struggling. I think they were off-speed pitches. And I wouldn't be surprised to go back to the well one more time. What do you throw here, then? I mean, I, I would expect something out of the strike zone. Maybe, yeah. But he's been swinging at pitches out of the strike zone. Why not go back to the well one more time? Ground ball foul. That one actually hung a little bit. It's probably not the location that Thornhill would have had in his mind when that ball was released from his hand. You want to go for that swing and miss. Start it in the strike zone and finish it outside of the strike zone. That one too much of the plate for an 0-2 count. Montemayor, not much speed over there at first. The 0-2 come. Outside, he held up on that one. Did not attack that pitch. Now one and two to Connor Hollis. He's all over the plate, Blue. Freshman walk on. Caught by Hinojosa, two down. For more coverage of the Division I baseball tournament and interactive brackets, make sure you go check out NCAA.com. You know, that pitch I think he's going to, Dar, is that cutter, the one of some pitch he's developed as of late. You know, you see his fastball around 91, 92, and then the cutter around 83, 84 with some really solid movement on it. That's the pitch they say he loves against righties. Yeah. yeah. So here's Vidalis now. Vidalis, the most dangerous hitter for Houston so far, two for two, a couple of singles in this game. If you're Texas and you say, well, Montemayor's over there at first, keep in mind he does not have much speed. And on the season, Vidalis has just five extra base hits. Houston today was not hit well, hitless in fact, with two outs. O for four. So they've also grounded into some ending inning double plays. And now Thornhill's got the Dallas right where he wants him. Two outs here in the bottom of the seventh, one and two. Crowd, I have a hunch. We'll get a little louder over the next few seconds. And they'll get to do it again. Chopper, not going to be an easy play for Marlowe. No play at all. Third single of the day for Josh Fidalis. He's three for three. Pretty heads up play, though, by Brooks Marlowe. Not to attempt to throw, to try to get the runner at first base. Instead, just eating it, you know, faking the throw. Because I don't think he would have had any chance at first base. Instead, trying to see if he can get the runner at second. Keep the ball in the infield, keep the damage to a minimum there with two outs. You know, getting towards the lower portion of this lineup. So now two on for the catcher, Caleb Barker, who's 0 for 2. Two balls hit into the infield. 
Ground ball to third in the third and then grounded into a double play. Hit back to Thornhill in the fifth. And now Skip Johnson is going to come out and chat with his pitcher. You're looking at a situation if you're Texas. You don't have a dangerous hitter up. You don't have much speed over there at second. It may take extra bases or two hits yeah. to score Montemayor. That's it. Skip Johnson get ahead back to the Texas dugout. Of course, is normally the visitors' dugout here in this ballpark, and is today. Just Texas is living in it. 20 pitches this inning for Thornhill. He's been working. 90 on the afternoon. 90 degrees, 90 pitches. It starts to yes. add up. Out yeah, there. it definitely does. So Montemayor at second, but Dallas at first. Down two in the seventh is Houston. Fly ball, center field. Mark Payton ends the inning. Something started, but nothing finished for Houston. 4-2. Wondering. Welcome back to Austin. 4-2 Texas as we go into the eighth. Dory Noka, Danny Cannell, and I think Kaylee Hartung still working technically. What are you doing out there, Kaylee? <laughs> Dory, we've been talking about how Dishbuck Field is sold out, all 7,600 seats, but I think I might have found the best seats in this whole place out behind the right field fence. This bus uh, now owned by some currently... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just enjoy your time out there, right? Kaylee. Yeah. <laughs> Have some fun. Enjoy it. It's covered. Maybe a little cooler out there. Yep. Now we. How are we gonna get down? That, that's the question now. <laughs> yeah. now I want to hit up the post game out there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that could be fun. Look at uh, right now. I'm stuck here, guys. What am I? <laughs> what? Huh? All right. We go to the eighth. Four two Texas. Six seven eight. Do up for the horns. CJ Hinna host of the shortstop, one for three on the afternoon. Game one of the best of three here in Austin. <laughs> Texas will be the home team in tomorrow's game two that begins at two o'clock Eastern time. And if there is a game three, Houston won that flip and would be the home team then. So Tyler Ford has found some trouble now. 3 0 to Hinojosa. 3 and 1. I believe Kaylee has uh, made her way out. <laughs> <laughs> Fouled back 3 and 2. Full count. I don't see the blue out there in the sea. No, it's, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> There are a bunch of gentlemen nope. out there. there she's still out there. Yeah. <laughs> and a horse side with a leadoff hit for Texas in the eighth. How about catching a little more baseball Sunday on ESPN as Big Poppy leaves the Red Sox against Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell, Boston and Detroit, 8 Eastern ESPN. And live on Watch ESPN. You and I will talk a little Major League Baseball tomorrow. Yeah. You are Mel Kuyper tomorrow. You yeah, are my radio right. co host on Saturday morning. <laughs> that's right. We'll do it from uh, 1300 here in Austin together. You and I, that'll be fun. And then we'll come right here for game two. And that butt is popped up. Ford makes the play. That is not execution, Colin Shaw. No, that's the cardinal sin. As a guy, when your job is to sacrifice the runner over, you can put it foul, you can you can miss, don't pop it up. And that's exactly what you got. And I think the first problem was getting a pitch you can deal with, a pitch up in the zone, which is what you're taught as a pitcher. I mean, credit to Tyler Ford throwing a high fastball. And you can see the frustration on Colin Shaw's 
body language as he was running down first, and Augie Garrido knows, hey, that's not Texas baseball right there. Casey Clemens now steps in, one on, one out. Clemens, first pitch swinging, skies that one, and it will get out of play. But that easy get for the gentleman who uh, is kind of standing. <laughs> You know, Major League Baseball draft going on right now. You see the Longhorns that have been selected, and you can add starting pitcher Dylan Peters to the list as he was just selected by the Miami Marlins in the 10th round. Three through 10 today, round-wise. That ball well hit Clemens. Right field. Cervantes looks like he's got it, and he does. Two down. His first cut was a pretty healthy cut. I think he was having visions of that at bat he had earlier when he was about three feet away from a home run. <laughs> yeah, right. He's liner off the top of the wall. Dylan Peters, one of the uh, fine starting pitchers in the country that we will not get to see in this Supers. He suffered an elbow injury in the last conference series of the season at Kansas State. And uh, he's done for the season. We won't see Dylan. But he has been drafted by the Marlins just a bit ago in the 10th round, so congratulations. Dylan Peters. Zane Gerwitz, third baseman, steps in. There he is. You think he knows yet? <laughs> well, I don't know. They, right. they, don't they want said them they to weren't going to tell him. They don't want the guys to know. We know Peyton isn't supposed to know. Grabo nicely played by Ratcliffe. The throw to first got it. Well done. Frankie Radcliffe. The lead remains two, but Houston running out of chances here in game one in Austin. We go to the bottom of the eighth, four two. How about Houston Street? ESPN counting down the 25 most impactful players in College World Series history is decided by an expert panel of ESPN's college baseball writers and announcers. One player will be revealed every day until the start of the College World Series June 14th. For more information on the CWS 25, go to ESPN.com slash college dash sports Houston Street. Just fantastic. Take a look at what he did in Texas. Most outstanding player in the 2002 College World Series, the all-tournament team that year. College World Series Legends team announced uh, part of that in 2010. He was something else. Speaking of pitching, Nathan Thornhill was something else as well. Ran into a little bit of trouble in the fifth. That's when the two runs crossed the plate. 91 pitches, and his day is done. And now they bring in John Curtis, 6'4", six more, six more sophomore from South Lake, Texas. Guys uh, really battled through some issues, some injuries. Tommy John surgery, then thoracic outlet surgery. It's been a long road back for John Curtis, but he came back earlier this season and he's been very, very good. He's got a team high eight saves. You know what, he can bring it too. He can pump it up there 94, 95 miles an hour when he rears back. Pinch hitter for Houston is Jacob Lewenberg. Lewenberg, a six foot redshirt senior. Caledonia, Wisconsin. Is Lewenberg's hometown, as you see what John Curtis has done so far. Another number you don't see there for Curtis is three, because in August he will graduate with a double major in three years. Oof. English and history for the young man on the mound. And one and two now to Jacob Lewenberg. Lewenberg hitting for Landon Appling. And then after Lewenberg is up, we go to the top of the order and Kyle Cervantes. Oh, didn't miss by much. Crowd here certainly wanted it. He didn't miss the strike zone by much, but he missed the spot. I think that's what umpires sometimes throws him off a little bit. See that catcher move his glove to one side or the other, even though it might have been a strike. We want to see you hit that catcher's mitt. Bring him up. The thing I've noticed about Thornhill 
and Curtis as they both they, they bring the heat. I mean, I'm, Curtis a little bit more pumped it up there to 95, but it looks so effortless and very sound mechanically. It doesn't look like they're overthrowing. Ball just pops off their hands. Two and two. Clemens over to Curtis Warwick. Let's go to our Charlotte studio, Matt Schick. Thank you, Dari and Danny. We are underway in Louisville. Kennesaw State, the three seed out of the Tallahassee Regional. Taking on Louisville, that is in the bottom of the first inning. That's on ESPNU right now. But you don't need to go there. You can watch Dari and Danny. <laughs> we'll get there when we get there, right? That's uh, you, right. You can go watch it when it's done. Uh, Kennesaw State, one of the unbelievable stores. 26 out of 27 or 25, <laughs> well, an unbelievable record. I think it. The hottest team in the country. Yeah, and they lost Cow. once. They lost once over the weekend, did they not? Let's see, let me, let me, let me look. At, yeah, they lost once. Uh, Alabama, and they ended up in the winner play, take all game. But just two losses, I think, in their last 28 or 29. Mm -hmm. Here's Cervantes, one and one. A remarkable story. A head coach that's been there for decades, won championships at the NAI level, Division II level. I think I read today no more than 300 people have been to any of their home games, but all of a sudden, it's <laughs> there are bars packed. in Atlanta that are packed watching them. Oh, that's pretty cool. With discounts in some of those establishments if you wear black and gold. That's what makes this game, you know, college baseball, so great. You just don't, the Fresno State of a few years ago that wins it as, after coming through a regional as a four seed. The Stony Brook and Kent State in the World Series at the same time. That's down, three and one now to the leadoff man, Cervance, who, by the way, does have 31 steals this season. Augie does not look concerned. <laughs> I don't think he ever does. No. He's been around the block. <laughs> There's not much that's going to rattle him. He's good. Yep. We're good. I like my closer. Well hit right field. Shaw retreats and he stops at the running track and makes the play. He knows he's got a lot of room to work with out there yes, too. Yes, he does. That ball was hit pretty well. Shaw was able to track it down with ease. Left fielder Michael Pyatt steps in one for three today. How strange do you think that would be as an outfielder? On a field that's entirely turf, and the warning track is turf. You're not uh, looking I, at the track when you're tracking a foul ball, and yeah. it feels the same. I don't know how strange. It'd be dangerous. Well, <laughs> I'm yeah, kind of worried. I mean, you'd have to take, you'd have to shag a lot of BP and a lot of fungos out there to try to get your bearings of where you are on the field, and you'd have to have great communication, you know, with your infielders, with your other outfielders. Try to get them to make sure they're giving you a heads up. Pyatt, well hit. Peyton. Hardly had to move. We're through eight. Texas top of the order coming up. They're three defensive outs away from one game. Welcome back to the dish in Austin, Texas. 4-2 Texas leading Houston. Game one of the Super Regional. Dari Noka, Danny Cannell, Kaylee Hartung. She's down there uh, on or near the field or on a bus or wherever she decides to do a report from here at UFCU Dish Falk Field. Ashford Fulmer, a defensive replacement in center field. The sophomore, very good defensive outfielder. Starts occasionally as well. Former in the center. Jacob Lewenberg had hit for the previous center fielder, Appling. So former essentially replaces Lewenberg as Tyler Ford continues on the mound for Houston. And it's the top of the Texas order, Brooks Marlin. Marlin well ahead of that pitch. One and one. You know Texas here with the leadoff batter would love to tack on another run or two for insurance. And there's three, four, five coming up for Houston in the bottom of the ninth. Hey. 
What kind of pressure shifts to the shoulders of Houston if they don't win or to whoever loses game one? Well, I mean, it's, it's, you know, you're facing elimination. You're facing your season being over, so definitely. And they've been there before. They right. were there against the LSU well, that's, and Baton Rouge last that's, week. And that's, I think, what Todd Wedding's message would be to the Cougars tonight would be, hey, look, you guys have been there before. You've been on the road. You've been in hostile environments. You've done it. No reason why you couldn't do it again. 2-2 from Ford. Popped up. Third baseman Hollis gives chase. But that is into the seats. And I think, you know, conversely, if you're Augie Garrido, if you do get out of this and win the game tonight, you know, this game right here, your message is, hey, let's close this out. Let's not be here on Sunday, you know, because I think that then the pressure comes back onto Texas, you know, and Houston catches a little momentum. So definitely a lot at stake. Another sky high pop up. Hollis once again and still doesn't have a play. <laughs> hey, I almost got hit by a ball. That's yeah. what she's saying. <laughs> hey, awesome. And I'm on the phone, so I would have never seen it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Another 2-2 pitch coming to Brooks Marlowe from Tyler Ford. And that is popped up, but in fair territory. But that was the second baseman back. The new center fielder, Fulmer, in and makes the play. Don't miss the world's greatest extreme athletes as they compete on Action Sports Ultimate Stage. Tonight, the men's Moto X Best Whip Final. Moto X Step Up Final and the Skateboard Big Air Final X Games Austin at 8 Eastern on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. There's two sites for the X Games here, but uh, the half pipe is, the one I guess, 10 blocks away and uh, awesomely located. Right in front of the Capitol building is the Different. backdrop. If we didn't have to do a radio show really early in the morning, I would consider <laughs> going and checking that out. I'm going tomorrow night for sure. Are you? I'm going to go check it out. So I keep thinking you're going to go to San Antonio tomorrow night and watch game two of your heat <laughs> against right. the Spurs. i got to make sure I give LeBron some fluids. Well, they gave, <laughs> you know? they gave new meaning to the word heat. <laughs> As right. it turned out, Miami couldn't handle it, right? <laughs> hey, watch it. A lot of Spurs fans here in Austin. <laughs> there are. I saw them at the hotel last night. An hour, hour and a half away from here. Ben Johnson. Now two of them. There's a strike, two and one. Caught the corner. Fouled back, we'll do it again, two and two. On deck, the very dangerous Mark Payton. Two for four today, two run homer and a single. Uh, you know, you look at it kind of the factors in this game. Mark Payton, obviously, with the two-run home run. And then Thornhill, you know, said at the beginning of the game, he could set this team as a senior leader, and he was calm, in command for most of the day. It's like a little blip in the fifth inning. That ball hit to the left field. Hyatt back and then up <laughs> and makes the catch. He made it a little bit of an adventure there, kind of misplayed it, took a step back. The ball didn't get all the barrel, though. I think that was... It looked more it imposing, did. It right? It did. I think he even thought it was, too. So Mark Payton steps in now. Nathan Thornhill in line for the win. Payton looking for an infield hit on a bunt, and he's got it. Not much he could not do with a bat in his hand. Ooh. That was just perfectly placed, too. Watch the soft hands. Just deadens the ball enough. 
Cuts the third baseman back on his heels. Connor Hall is playing deep. Saw how deep he was playing. Ford tried his best to come over and play it. Really no play. Smart decision there. Yeah, he knew it. Only disaster could happen there. So now Frank Anderson comes back out for Houston. Again, for four seasons, Augie Garrido's pitching coach of Texas from 2000 to 2003. Before he left to become the head coach at Oklahoma State. Actually replaced Tom Holliday, who then took his spot here as pitching coach of Texas. All right, so the approach perhaps, I, I mean, you've got to wonder if they're discussing Peyton and whether or not he may try to steal. Another run would would feel devastating yeah. today for Houston. And Peyton is 19 of 20 in stolen base attempts this season. Barrera, the catcher up, and Barrera sends that deep to left field. Tie it back, and he pulls up just short of the track. And the thrill didn't last long for this Longhorn crowd. Three outs to go. Three, four, five coming up for Houston. The NCAA Baseball Super Regionals is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. And in part by Heineken. Open your world. Enjoy responsibly. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. Game one of this Super Regional. Texas is three outs away from wrapping up and taking a 1-0 lead. Time to check out what Nathan Thornhill did. Uh, he was in complete command for most of the afternoon. His off-speed stuff was working. Had a couple Houston batters swinging at it. The change up was solid for him, but pretty much in command all afternoon was Nathan Thornhill. That young man is our Capital One player of the game. Seven innings, just seven hits and two earned runs. Efficient. That's what I would yeah, really describe. Well. I mean, you look at only 91 pitches. You know, was working ahead for primarily most of the day when you look at the counts that the hitters were facing. Only one walk. So last chance for Houston here. Bottom nine. Three, four, and five do up. Casey Grayson, Frankie Radcliffe, and Justin Montemayor. And John Curtis. He and his eight saves going to try to close this out in a second on, inning of work. You won't, bud. Texas comes back tomorrow. They're the home team here with that last. The win today would be big. And for Houston. They then have to convince themselves that it's no different than Baton Rouge last week, where we had backs against the wall and won. But Casey, do it! One and one coming to Grayson. First hit of the day. Little number. First base. Clemens. No, taken by Curtis. <laughs> and they're two outs away from a one-nothing lead in the best of three. Sometimes those pitchers, they don't want to let anything right. bad go wrong. They're gonna say, I'm gonna take it myself. Hustling over there to cover first. Said, hey, this ball's right in front of me. Why not pick it up and touch first base and get it myself? So now one for three on the day, Frankie Ratcliffe, the shortstop, steps in. And the chant of Texas fight going strong here at the dish. Take first pitch. Inside, 1-0. Oh. 
Yeah, nobody's left this ballpark. 7,600 strong. Sweet, Frankie. One and one. Entire weekend is sold out. He's got that pitch working, Danny. Yes, he does. Picked right up where Thornhill left off. Keep looking, Frankie. Looking, looking, looking. Well hit, center field. It is down for a base hit. Peyton makes a great play to cut it off. He did. And hold Ratcliffe to a single. For a second there, I thought he might have misplayed it. And then you forget how much room is out there. <laughs> in center field for him to track that down. It's a fastball, just caught way too much of the plate. And Ratcliffe was able to drive it. You see Peyton, he makes it look easy out there. He's, that's, what, that's what fast guys do. Yeah. They make it look effortless, right? That's exactly right. Drafted <laughs> earlier today by the New York Yankees, and according to a Texas, they didn't want him to know about this, so he still may not, may not know it. Justin Montemayor, one for two and a walk, steps in. Texas pitchers have gone 30 consecutive innings without allowing an extra base hit. Game the last one play. came against Rice, a double in the sixth last Saturday in Houston. But Montemayor is the game tying run right now. Conversation over. 0-1 soon coming to Montemayor. Swing a miss. Round ball. Clemens to second for one. This may end it. No. Montemayor beats the throwback. That was close. Really close. And that ball was fielded as about as cleanly as you can get from Casey Clemens at first base. Beautiful scoop, the quick throw, and then hustles back to cover. Just a little too late, though. Good call by the first base yep. up, David Savage. So <laughs> Connor Hollis, the last chance for Houston. Take that back. Hollis not going to hit here. Jacob Campbell. Sophomore from Alvin, Texas, is going to hit for Hollis. A lot of pressure, 31. Well, you talk about a pressure situation here. Campbell. Campbell on the season, Danny, has one hit. He's one for 21. Yes, that's 048. And he's ahead 2 and 0. You just let him swing here, right? Absolutely. If you, I mean, if you're Curtis, you yeah. just got to pound the strikes on. You know, maybe for Todd Whitting for Houston, you're thinking, hey, you've seen some pop from him, some power in batting practice where. Maybe he can tie this up with one swing. Two and one. 17th game in which he's appeared. He started twice. One for 21. Look at that in the left center field, but sliding over is Johnson. And Texas takes a 1-0 lead in this Super.
The Longhorns now one win from a 35th trip to Omaha for the College World Series. Tomorrow they will be the home team. ESPN, 2 o'clock Eastern time. We will have game number two for you from here at the dish. You see our bracket. Texas up 1-0 now on Houston. Oklahoma State, UC Irvine play a little later tonight on ESPNU. Louisville and Kennesaw State underway on ESPNU. And Vanderbilt knocked off Stanford earlier, 11-6. Final score, Texas 4, Houston 2. Coming up around the horn presented by Smirnoff. Game 2 right here, 2 Eastern on ESPN tomorrow. For Danny Cannell and our entire crew, I'm Dorian Oka saying goodbye from Austin. <laughs>